Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa nuri qulubina wa qurrati ya'inina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim. Nawaina ta'alluma wa ta'lim wa tadhakkura wa tazkira wa naf'a wa intifa wa lifada wa istifada wal hasa ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a ila al huda wa dalala an al khair ibtigha'a wajhillaha mardatihi wa qurbihi thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin allahumma inna nas'aluka al 'ilma ladunni wa mashraba as-safi al-hani ya wahhab ya ghani allahumma inna nas'aluka al 'ilma ladunni wa mashraba as-safi al-hani ya wahhab ya ghani allahumma inna nas'aluka al 'ilma ladunni wa mashraba as-safi al-hani ya wahhab ya ghani wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillah rabbil alamin amin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah 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 we are continuing for our Um, we're continuing with with our book on Safina Dunaja. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give us uh, full success, full success and victory over all the trials of this world. Right, so we're at page seventy four in the English text. Right, page seventy four, right, and um, he says, "Faslun Shurutul Qudwati Ahda Ashara." Right, chapter the conditions of Qudwa. Right, Qudwa here it means um, leadership. I right, meaning to be an Imam. I to be an imam in the prayer. For shurut lo kudwati, ah, ahada ashara. Okay, al awal, ayn al awal, Allah ya alama, Allah ya alama, butla na salat imamihi bihadas atau gairihi. Sani atau Allah ya takida wujub qadaiha alaihi asalis, wa Allah ya kuna ma'muman. الرابع ولا ولا أميا الخامس وأن لا يتقدم عليه في الموقف السادس وأن يعلم الانتقالات إمامه سابع وأن يج وأن يجتمع في مسجد أو في ثلاث ثلاث مئة ذراع تقريبا الثامن وأن ينوي القدوة أو الجماعة التاسع وأن يتوافق نظ نظم صلاتهما العاشر وأن لا يخالفه في سنة فحشة المخالفة وحادي عشرة وأن يتابعه. Okay. Section. The conditions of for following uh, of an imam are eleven. So here the conditions meaning if any point in time of the prayer, any of these conditions are not met, then the prayer is. All right. So I think I was at the part on, part on, on conditions. So what are conditions? Conditions are basically, as we mentioned, um, in the, for wudu and for prayer and everything, right? Well, conditions is the things that have to be existent, uh, from the beginning of the act of worship to the end of the act of worship, for the act of worship to be considered valid, right? So, um, they have to be, they they must be present from the beginning to the end, right? So the first thing here we see, uh, point number seventy nine. Salat jama'ah. Right, salat jama'ah is a congregational prayer. Jumu'ah is Friday prayers. Jama'ah is congregational prayers. Right, jama'ah. Uh, not, not, it's not jumu'ah, it's jama'ah. Right, salatul jama'ah um, is a fardu kifaya. It's a communal obligation. So if there is a community whereby nobody is praying salatul jama'ah, then the entire community of people are sinful. Right, every society there has to be satul jamaah, which is usually fulfilled by the masjids. Right, the masjids will fulfill this this obligation of salat jamaah somewhere. But if you were to live in a society like like whereby there are very very few Muslims or hardly any Muslims, and nobody is praying together, there's no salat jamaah at all. Then the entire society of Muslims there, even if they're minority, they're all in sin. And they are all in sin. There has to be at least one jamaah somewhere for every single solat. Eh, and so every single solat there has to be a jamaah somewhere in the society. In Singapore, Alhamdulillah, our masjids fulfill this obligation uh, of having of of always having such jamaah for every single uh, prayer. 
Okay, upon all is is a communal obligation upon all males. Now on males. Free persons and muqim. Muqim are non-travelers. So they are different from locals. Right? And later on when we learn, we learn about the Friday prayer, we will see the, 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 the importance in this difference of who are, who are um, like muqim, you'll be people who have settled. They have settled but they're not locals. Right? So like for example, when I lived in Tarim for four years, so I'm a muqim. I, I'm a muqim. I, I, I have settled in Tarim, I, but I, have, I am not a local of Tarim. I've but I've settled there for four years. I so I'm not traveling. I'm just I'm I'm there um to stay for some time, but I'm not there to stay forever. And no, am I a a person from that place? Okay, you know, I said no, no, am I a person from that place? Okay, all right. So um nah, all right. So this is why later on for Friday prayers, uh, Friday prayers for men who are muqim, and uh, men who are non-travelers and are non-locals. The Friday prayer is compulsory on them. However, they are not counted as one of the 40 individuals that make up the Friday prayer. Which later on, I'll go into it. Lah. I'll explain it on. Okay, sane individuals, those who have reached age of puberty for the five far prayer and uh, for, for the five far prayer. Right? So, um, the people who perform the jama'ah, they have to be people who have reached puberty. And it's enough for females to come for the, uh, for, for the jama'ah prayer. For in the Shafi'i Mazhab, right, only Shafi'i Mazhab, that females can lead females. Uh, it's not a condition of being a male to be, uh, to be an Imam. In other Mazhabs, it is actually a condition that the Imam can only be male. So if a female were to be an Imam, taksa, <laughs> right? But in India prayer, right, some 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 Mazhab says not even not even valid. Some Mazhab will say that um, there's no reward of Jama'ah. So when I was studying overseas, I met people who were who were Hanafi. A Hanafi woman cannot become cannot, cannot become imam no matter what. Woman even woman over woman cannot be imam. Uh, so we so if you are a group of women, you just can't pray jamaah. Just cannot pray jamaah because <laughs> only men can be imam. Uh, in their mazhab, in their mazhab. So they found it so strange. The Shafi'is keep praying <laughs> the jamaah together because you're so used to it. Like, well, like, 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 if you're all a group a bunch of women together, you're like yeah, to pray together lah. Then one person will be the imam, can and everybody else will just stand next to the. I mean, in the same line, but the imam is a bit in front. I uh, in the Maliki mazhab, it's not even sah. Uh, if a woman were to uh, lead the prayer, the whole prayer tak sah. Uh, you know, <laughs> only a prayer of of other women. Of course, a woman can never lead a prayer with other men lah. Uh, but uh, a woman doing the prayer of other women only in the Shafi mazhab. Uh, it allows for it, mashallah. Eh? So alhamdulillah, so a lot of them will just take the Shafi mazhab opinion and. Pray jama'ah with the with the woman. Otherwise, you get no jama'ah <laughs> because in Tarim there were no uh woman areas in the masjid. Uh, so you, if you don't you don't pray for other women, you probably don't get any jama'ah unless your husband prays with you lah, uh, or men prays with you. Uh, inshallah. So anyway, um uh uh, this is FYI lah. In case you would uh see why like if you go to some 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 I went to one country once in Syria. Then I was in a it's was some friends lah who over, who were foreigners. Then I was like. Why is everyone praying by themselves? Why nobody brings jama'ah? <laughs> then I realized we're all Hanafi. <laughs> then nobody prays. They, they, they never pray together. They just never pray together. Right. Uh, now. Okay, so then. Um, uh, okay, so, 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 the right of the, so that such a the right of the, of the prayer be public in a man at the rights of the prayer. That means the, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the ibadah. The ibadah of solat. Uh, the ibadah of solat is. Is made um public in a manner that the manifestation of obedience to Allah's command is evident. Uh, it has to be evident. If held in a house where the right of the prayer is not public, the obligation remains unfulfilled, though a have a sign on it is sufficient. Right. So if let's say that you're in uh, some in society whereby really there's the very few Muslims, very few Muslims, and not a single masjid anywhere to be found. Right, so the Muslims themselves in that society, right, they need to work themselves, work out amongst themselves. The men lah must work out among themselves uh, a jama'ah for every single solat, uh, and they need to announce it amongst the Muslims. It has to be announced amongst the Muslims. So the Muslims need to know that this particular house has jama'ah for every single solat when there is no masjid. And right, so it really is the situation whereby it's like you come to a new land. And there's nobody there. You're the only Muslims there. Uh, that, kind of, that kind of thing. Like, and it's not a country, but it's a, it's a neighborhood. 
So every neighborhood, eh, every neighborhood. So you go to like if you go to a town in America or in China or in, so anywhere like you go to a town, a particular town, and you're the only Muslims there, no other Muslims. Then amongst amongst the men, eh, amongst themselves, they need to organize themselves and have jamaa every single solat, um, uh, uh, and and announce it to all the Muslims who are there. Okay, uh, it is best for men to offer prayer in jamaa in a masjid, and it's better for women to pray at home than at a masjid. Uh, it is permissible for women for women to go to the it is permissible for women to go to the masjid as the Prophet sallallahu had allowed for it and had told the men not to stop the women from going to the masjid. However, uh, if there is a real fitna going on at the masjid between men and women, which you know, uh, arguably uh, in our time it does happen, uh, whereby there's a lot of mixing. Uh, in some not maybe maybe in Singapore not so because we have different different um areas in the masjids. Remember when I was in the when I was in uh the US uh, in America, they're very small masjids. Right? Where everybody just bought a small piece of like a hall and that became the masjid. Right? So it was very small. Right? So when, when the men prayed, uh, literally the, the very next stuff is the woman. So when you when when you when you look at Sujud, you're looking at the at the behinds of men. It's so close. It's so close. Right, the 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 safs out, uh, safs out, men, 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 women, 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 women. Uh, they're very close in their in their saf, and the masjid is usually usually packed. Uh, so when I was, I remember when I was in the US, I stopped going to the masjid. I prayed in my own uh dormitory, right, because uh, there's only one exit, only one door. All the men and women would go out through that one door, right. So it uh, which I felt that, you know, uh, since the masjid is very small, you should you should let the men just go lah. Uh, the men occupy the masjid because it's compulsory again. Eh? It's compulsory on them, jama'ah and jumu'ah. Right? Whereas, it's my internet connection. Okay, whereas, um, okay, is it okay? Okay, is it okay? I hope my connection is okay. Raining today, so the, the connection is a bit off. Okay, whereas for uh, Allahumma Sadi Sayyidina Muhammad, is it okay? Is my connection okay? Okay. <laughs> wajib on them, and it's not wajib on you. I still remember that time when I was in the, in in America. I said I was I was there in the masjid, right, and I was like, and I saw like I was super small. So I just mentioned to one woman next to me, like I said to her that um, you know, we shouldn't be here. <laughs> we should we should be in our own uh, rooms or in our own houses and and praying there because Juma on Jamaa also is not compulsory on us. Yeah, it's soon enough for us. And then she was like, No, 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 no. Right? We need we need to come to the masjid because we need to feel the sense of community. Technically, as at that time I didn't say anything lah, but technically now I think back that you can always make your own sense of community amongst the women. Right? Just organize yourselves and then pray your jama together, lah somewhere else. Right? Why you go to the masjid? Can you don't have to be the, at the masjid. So basically this this last part can right it is if there is a a fitna if the men and women are mixing too much, if they are too close right, to each other, if it's if there's no space for the men, right, then the woman go and organize somewhere else. Right, go and find another space and go and pray there. Right, um, and so it's better for them, and it's more of that that it is better for a woman to be hidden, um, and 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 to be private, you know, in in your lives than to be open in front right, of uh, of the men. And inshallah, as 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 uh, in contrary to the to what the, the entire feminist uh, rhetoric and nowadays, eh, all the women want to be in front, want to be in front. Actually, you know what, Subhanallah, the woman being in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the best. Like if you are, if you you are, you, if you're outstanding, if you're exceptional, in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And who cares about being exceptional in front of men? Can <laughs> you should be, you should want to be exceptional in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Who cares about wanting to impress men? Uh, impress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your ibadah. Okay. It is valid for a shafi'i. Okay, let me just go to the, uh, the footnotes. Eh? So the first one is the ma'mum shouldn't, fo- shouldn't know any of the invalidity, invalidity of the prayer of his imam due to ritual impurity or anything else. So for example, if you are very sure that your imam salat is not uh, sah. Right? So how do you know? For example, you're praying. And then the imam's aura is exposed. Right, so you bring back a woman, and you saw, hey, the imam's foot exposed. Right, the moment you see the imam's foot exposed, 
right? You need to intend mufaraka. Right? It's going to be a word they're going to hear over and over again. Eh? You're going to be intending what? Mufaraka. Okay. So let me just put it here at the beginning. At any point in time, at any, it's a rule, eh? at any point in the congregation, at any point in the congregational prayer, if you realize any of these conditions, cease right, to be or uh, is no longer met. Right, you must intend to break away from the congregation and continue the prayer by yourself. Okay? At any point in time, if you realize that this that these conditions are not being met, you must intend to break away from the congregation and pray the pray and continue to pray to pray yourself. Failing to do so, yeah. I mean, if you continue, sorry, if you continue, condition is not being met, then. Your prayer is invalid. Not just a jama'ah is invalid. Your prayer itself, that's sah. Your prayer itself is invalid. Right? Your prayer becomes invalid. Okay. So, um, so let's say, for example, you're praying behind an imam and you see that the imam's aura is being exposed. Right? So, straight away, then, then at that point in time, you need to intend that you are uh, breaking away from the congregation. So, breaking away from the congregation, right, means, let me put it back here, eh? Uh, can I right? Okay, that means niat nawaitu mufaraka. Nawaitu mufaraka in Arabic. Nawaitu mufaraka means I intend to break away from the congregation. You can say it in English. I intend to break away from the congregation, and then you continue praying by yourself. I or you can say nawaitu mufaraka. Minal jama'ah, you want to say. No, itu mufaraqah. Minal imam. Are you going to... Allah. My internet connection is uh, unstable again. Allah. Okay. Ken, is it okay now? Allahumma salli wa salli wa barik ala. Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Technology. Inshallah, I'll get back to the masjid as soon. Much easier. <laughs> okay, come. Um, Nam. Okay, I saw. Allah Nam. Right, so. Uh, if. I can't remember what I was saying. Nam. Right, so, so if a person does not intend mufaraka, if you don't intend to break away from the imam, your prayer becomes invalid. Nam. Right, so it, it is. Uh, so he says it is valid for a shafi'i. To follow an imam of a different mazhab, whether the follower is not, uh, whenever the follower is not certain that the imam has omitted an obligatory component of the prayer, however, if certain that the imam has omitted one uh, of the ob of the obligatory uh, points of the prayer, it is not valid to follow him. The validity is based solely on the mazhab of the follower as to whether or not something is obli some ob obligatory has been omitted. For example, I'm going to explain this by in a while when it's straight through. For example, if a Shafi'i follow a Hanafi Imam who touched his private part, according to the mazhab of the Hanafi, uh, the wudu of the Imam is uh, mazhab of the Shafi'i, uh, the mazhab of the Imam is invalidated, but not the mazhab of the Imam. Okay, so you see, okay, just like I mentioned about about someone whose prayer was um invalid unknowingly. Uh, so in Imam Shafi'i mazhab Imam, uh, but because in her movement her feet became uncovered. Right, so you're praying behind her. You see that her feet is, uh, her feet are uncovered, um, and so you niat mufaraka from her. Are right? you gonna break away from the from the congregation? You're gonna pray by yourself. Yes, that is correct. Right, or another example is, uh, you realize that there is najis right, on her, uh, prayer garment. Right? so as you're praying or on his on on him. So for example, you're praying being a man, like you of your father or so on, and then and then as they sujo, you see at the bottom of their feet. There is like a dead um fly or something like a dead animal, 
at the bottom of his feet. That is najis. Right? That is najis. Right? So while his prayer is valid, because he doesn't, he doesn't know, he doesn't, doesn't notice that what you know that he has uh, najis on him. Uh, you, you as a ma'mum, you are seeing this, right? You are seeing this, and so you have to immediately intend mufaraka. Right? You have to immediately intend um to be uh to 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 free yourself or to to free to free yourself of the jamaah. Nah? Um, and he's asked us the question, but ask the question. Then, then should I tell him after that? <laughs> should I tell my father right, that there's a dead fly at his foot and he should pray again? <laughs> uh, yes, you should. <laughs> right. So he said after the prayer, right, if you, if you're praying, you know, see, so yeah, so if you're praying and someone is praying in front of you, and then her feet get uncovered as she sujud, so now her feet is exposed, now her aura is exposed. So should I tell her, right, or should I lean forward and? Cover her feet for her. Is there any point in doing so? <laughs> right, because if your feet is gets uncovered, your aura is uncovered. If the aura is not covered within the level of two manina, the prayer is invalid. Right. So by 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 the time you the mom saw the feet covered and think, and by the time you think about what to do about the uncovered feet, by the time you move forward to try and <laughs> uh, pull her kain and <laughs> to pull her her garment to try and cover her feet, it's way more than Subhanallah already. <laughs> it's more than two manina already. Technically, her prayer is already invalid. There's no point in you doing anything at this point except that you have to niat mufaraqah. Then after after uh, your prayer, you can go and inform her. Just now when you were praying, you can, your aura was exposed, you need to pray again. And you can, you can tell her about it. Lah. All right? so, but, but however, if someone is praying by themselves and any part of like that their prayer was and, and their prayer was invalid but they were not, were not aware that their prayer was invalid, then it's okay. As long as you're not aware, it's okay. Uh, but if someone brings to your attention, eh, so if you're praying by yourself, then suddenly you feel at the back, you know, at your feet, someone pull your prayer garment to cover your feet. You're like, Allah, she just told me that my prayer is invalid. <laughs> Basically, she did nothing to help you. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't, um, you can't continue praying. <laughs> because you, at that point in time, you felt somebody pull your prayer garment. That means, dari jadi, from, just, from just now lah, like, like tadi, yeah? from, from just now, your, probably your aura was exposed. Probably. <laughs> right? so, so you're like, do you continue praying? No, you don't. You stop praying there and then. Right, and then you pray, start praying again because you're praying you pray already invalid. Right, so her covering your aura does nothing for you <laughs> except tell you your prayer is invalid. So you can actually um, uh, speak to a person praying if you know their prayer is invalid. Like I've done it before when I, when I came, once I came into my house and I saw my cousin praying in the wrong direction. <laughs> I don't know why, Sula. I live here for 20 years and my cousin doesn't know where's the Qibla of my house. <laughs> right, so she came in the house and she forgot where's the Qibla or something. Like that. She prayed in completely the wrong direction uh, because one of the four-year-olds told her that it's that way. <laughs> she asked the four-year-old, my niece, where's the Qibla? The Qibla just point there. <laughs> she prayed wrong way. So I came out and I saw, why is, this, why is my cousin praying the wrong way? So I just said out to her, hey, your Qibla is wrong. Eh? <laughs> I just said out to her. So she stopped there and then. Alhamdulillah, they have fakey. Eh? They got fakey. She stopped there and then. Ha, huh? wrong. <laughs> this way is the Qibla. <laughs> You're praying the wrong way. And she was like, but Afra said this way. She's four years old. <laughs> How does she know? <laughs> Inshallah. Right, but so anyway, if you find someone's prayer is invalid, you just say it. Just say it out loud. So your aura is exposed. Just say that your aura is exposed. You have to stop praying now. Stop praying now. <laughs> I thought if I was say to them, you need to stop praying now, your aura is exposed. The person continue praying. Now I'll be like, I will say the person's name. So and so, your aura is exposed. You need to stop praying now and start again. <laughs> And they continue praying. After that, I had to explain to them after they finish praying. You need to pray again. <laughs> your, your prayer is not, not, not valid. No, inshallah. Okay, so anyway, if, if, okay, that's the situation of whereby, whereby uh, Imam and follower are both Shafi'i. If Imam is a different masab, and the Shafi'i is a different masab, and, and, and the Mamum is a different masab, right? Every person is praying on the masab of themselves. Okay, every person is praying based on the mazhab that you follow. So, as a Shafi'i, I follow Shafi'i mazhab. In my mazhab, the very touching of uh, the skin of the opposite gender who is not your mahram would nullify the wudu. Right? In my mazhab. Right? In our mazhab, that's, that's what, that's what we, 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 we learn. That's our, that's our ruling. Right? So, if let's say I saw an imam, Right, and he, you know, um, touched his wife, and right? he kissed, her, he he held her hand. So if I saw him holding her hand, right, in the masjid, and then he goes up to the front of the congregation and he begins praying. So in his mazhab, he has wudu still. In my mazhab, he does not have wudu, right? Because I just I just saw him with his wife, right? So can I pray behind him? Answer is no. 
uh, because I'm very sure he does not have wudu. Uh, so it's not a matter of that he's a different master can pray behind him. No, it's a matter of are you very sure that his prayer is not valid in your mazhab? Uh, so if let's say I know a man is Hanafi, but I did not see him specifically, you know, uh, touch any woman or whatsoever. So I I maintain the opinion of what I know of the Imam that his prayer is valid. Another example is in the Shafi'i Mazhab to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is part of the Fatiha. That is part of our Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Okay. Um, in the Maliki Mazhab, Bismillahir Rah of in the Maliki Mazhab, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is not part of the Fatiha. So when you hear them recite, they recite straight into Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. They won't say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So if you are praying behind an Imam, this happens at Majlis Haram. Eh? If you go to Mecca, Medina, they do not say the Bismillahirrahmanirrahim out loud. Right? But you can assume they have done it quietly. You can assume. Right? So if they say, for example, the Imam goes, Allahu Akbar. And there was a pause. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Uh, so you didn't hear any Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. But because of the pause, you can assume that the Imam said Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. You can assume. But if you heard Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, uh, you didn't hear any, there was, no, there was no possibility of the Imam having said Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So you now, uh, yakin, eh, you, have, you have full certainty that the Imam did not say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim for his Fatiha. Imam's prayer, Batal. Right? Imam's prayer in your mazhab, in your mazhab, Imam's prayer not valid. Right? Because didn't say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim because in our mazhab, must say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Right? So Imam maybe following another mazhab, not saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Right? So when you, when you go to Majlis Haram, right, if, uh, usually they have, a, they, have a, they have a pause. They will always have a pause to read Dua Iftitah and whatsoever. So you can assume the Imam said Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. But if it ever happened that, you, that, that, you, that, you, that this, this, this kind of thing happened to you when you're praying with a group, then you know uh, to actually intend to pull away from the, uh, from the, from the congregation. Alright? Number two, uh, it should not be such that according to the mazhab of the ma'mum, the prayer of the Imam is invalid and has to be repeated. Now, it's all is according to the one who is praying. Eh? The one who is praying. The ma'mum. Okay, so what does this mean? The prayer of the imam is in and has to be to be repeated. So there are some solats, right? There are some prayers whereby, um, the the prayer in in itself has to be repeated. And we went through some examples of these prayers, like for example tayammum. Right? There are certain forms of tayammum that will require qada. Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember which, which, which forms of tayammum will require qada? Go and test you all. Eh? <laughs> what kind of tayammum require qada? A tayammum where? About the cast, right? Remember about the cast? You have like a, a, a large piece of um, plaster or cast on your, on your limb, on your, on your uh, uh, limb that is both wudu and tayammum limb. So if let's say I have my entire finger casted, Right, and I can't remove the cast at all. Right? so my tayammum is not valid. My wudu is not valid, and it takes and and and, and so, so therefore automatically I perform wudu as well, as much as I can, and I perform tayammum to the best of my ability. But both are not valid. I pray the way I am, knowing that once I am better, I must qada. Right, remember the 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 the, the six um. The six situations of tayammum and the uh, I went through you all right, <laughs> correct? And the six conditions, the six situations of tayammum and um the jabira, called jabira situation meaning the the cast, the cast of the plaster, the plaster. So it, so if the plaster is on a wudu limb, if the plaster is on a tayammum limb, if the plaster covered more than what is necessary, if the plaster um cannot be removed. If the plaster, remember, I went through all the different cases of the plaster <laughs> and it covers the body. So if someone is praying in a way whereby they need to do a qada of their prayer. So that's one example. Another example is if someone were to pray, um, having not not being able to cover their aurat sufficiently. Right? So if someone, uh, you know, is, for example, in uniform and then realize that they can't catch um, a zuhur at home. So wherever they are, they have to pray. At the Zuhur. So she prays Zuhur in a uniform. Like wearing a skirt, wearing a shirt, short sleeve, her hair exposed. She prays Zuhur. 
She prays the whole like that. Then, then like that. Right? She has to because it's, it's, she has to pray. And she's not to count as someone who has missed her prayer as she prays. But then, later when she's able to cover her aurat, she needs to redo her prayers. She must redo her prayers. Right? So, her first prayer that she prayed in that way um, requires for there to be a qada. Right? So, the prayer is not valid, but it has to be done out of respect of the prayer time. So, it has to be done, but it has to be repeated later on. Okay, if I know my imam is like that, right? if I know my imam has a cast right, on his limb and his wudu is not well, not, not complete noise, and I know for certain the imam must do a qada once the imam is better, I cannot be a ma'amum to this person, nor can this person be an imam. This person cannot be an imam. Right? So they need to uh, step back and be a ma'amum. Okay, and this I hope that is clear. So as long as you know the prayer has, uh, if the prayer has to be khaba, right, has to be repeated, then you cannot be a makmum to such a person. Um, okay, the imam should not be a follower. I mean, the imam should not be a, a makmum, right? So if I come into a, if I come into a jamaah, there is an let me just draw. Eh? There is an imam in front, and there's one imam here. Okay, and then I and then there is a saf. Of people praying behind the imam. Okay, people are praying here. Right, behind the imam. Okay. So, and then there's another staff of people praying behind the imam. Okay. So, if I come in, right, and I want to stand here, and I think to myself, okay, I want to make the person next to me my imam. I can't hear the imam, I can't see the imam, I don't know what's going on. So, I'm going to make this guy my imam, so I stand a bit behind her, and I make her my imam cannot right because she is following that one i cannot i cannot make her my imam while she is a makmum while she is a makmum i cannot make her my imam right, but if let's say the prayer has finished they already finished the prayer and she stood up again for her second and third rakat i remember last week i mentioned to you all she stood up again for second and third rakat i stand up with her now i can make her my imam because she's no longer a makmum and she's finished being a makmum to the imam because the imam has finished praying. And remember last week I told you all, eh? So while she's a makmum, I she can be an imam. But after she, the imam has finished, she's no longer a makmum, she can now become an imam. And I, I can imam can her. And I can make her into my imam. Alright? Um, so the imam should not be a follower. Let me read all the footnotes, eh? The footnotes at the bottom. Um, 81, it should not be such that, it should not be such a follower following the prayer of a person which would have to be repeated, like someone praying a uh, uh, prayer with tayammum because of cold. Uh, this kind of tayammum has to be the, the prayer must be qada. A muqim who made tayammum at the place where there is usually water to be found easily, another situation whereby, whereby prayers must be qada. Uh, or a person who does not find enough water for wudu nor uh, earth for tayammum, that means if no tayammum nor wudu, prayer must be qada as well. Uh, or in these situations, the prayer sh should be repeated. Although the prayer was very according to, according to the mazhab of the imam. Right? So they, they need to repeat uh, the prayer after that. Okay. Number 82. Any point you have any questions, ask your questions. Eh? Number 82. It invalidates one's prayer to make to take a makmum as imam when the makmum is concurrently praying behind an imam. Uh, keyword. Eh? Concurrently praying behind an imam. Though if his imam fears salams, the imam is still praying, he can be taken as one's imam, as I just mentioned. You can make someone your imam after his imam has already finished praying. Alright. Um, okay, now, let's do it number, number six, number five. Eight, oh, number four. <laughs> Not an illiterate person. What is an illiterate person? An illiterate person is a person who is unable to recite the compulsory parts of the prayer well or correctly. So, what is an illiterate person? Illiterate, right, unable to recite the arkan qawli that means the verbal um the verbal obligations of the prayer specifically eh? specifically these things right, so if he can't recite anything else as sunnah it doesn't make him illiterate right? it's only if he's, he's unable to recite because so that, then technically number four falls in together in the same ruling, ruling as number one. The prayer of the person is not valid in the first place. Right? Because um, he's unable to recite. 
parts that are that there are verbal obligations. In his own right, his prayer is valid uh, because he has an excuse. Uh, he's unable to recite. Maybe he is um his tongue is uh, unable to pronounce. Uh, he never learned to pronounce. Or he's a new Muslim. He's not memorized yet, and so on. Uh, so they have they have other they have, you know there are reasons why they're not reading these parts well. Right. So if uh for them by themselves their prayer is valid. However, for you, you cannot pray behind them. Uh, so this includes a person whose fatiha is not correct. Uh, so if you were to come and pray by an imam, and the imam is reciting fatiha all wrong, that means the imam's prayer is not valid, and therefore you cannot be a ma'mum behind this imam. Right? So for example, if the imam were to recite, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I uh, see all the ha become ha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The ain became a. Ar-Rahmani Rahim. Again, all the ha all not there. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iya kana abu. Again, Iya kana budu. Uh, they don't do the ain again. Iya kana budu wa Iya kana sta'im. Uh, so now, then they change the nun to a mim pula, right? Ya kana abudu wa iya kana sta'im. Ihdina surat al mustaqim. Surat al ladina ana amda alayhim. So again, if they, if they go surat, uh, surat al, uh, surat al, the sot becomes sin, the ta becomes ta, the the uh, the the a becomes a, the ha becomes ha. All the letters are mixed up. Um, again, ana amda, an amda, or an amda alayhim. غير المغضوب مغضوب not saying ضاد but saying دل مغضوب there is ضاد مغضوب there is دل عليهم ولا مبالين آمين so if the if the if the imams because you wouldn't know if the imam is illiterate unless you hear the imam and the only recitation that you actually hear the Imam recite is Fatiha. And only for Subo, Maghrib and Isha. In between all, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Unless you know the Imam is someone who's unable to recite. Then whether you're praying Zuhur or Asar or Maghrib or either Imam, you cannot pray behind the Imam. Right? Because you know this Imam does not know how to pronounce Dod. Right? Or the Imam cannot pronounce Ain. Or the Imam is unable to pronounce Ha. Right? So all of these things make the Imam illiterate. Uh, it is. It is not, so I find this, this reading to be hard <laughs> in our society, especially when you have family members who are male and they're older, and they are not reciting well. <laughs> their, 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 their letters are all not correct. Right. So it's it's difficult. It says that you have to, you have to not follow them, and then at the same time not hurt their feelings. <laughs> right. Trying to not you know offend them. Right. But uh, at the same time. Their letters are wrong. You know, subhanallah. I, uh, there was a question I was asked to, to, to Habib that, that, that you know, the, uh, the, the questioner was said that, you know, her old, her old grandmother loves to be the Imam for Taraweeh over the woman in their house. When all the men go to the masjid, the woman at home, right? The grandmother loves to do the Imam for Taraweeh. But the, all of them know the grandmother um, does not pronounce letters well. And sometimes the grandmother even mixes up the ayat of Surah Fatiha. She's forgetful. So she, she, might, she might skip ayats. Sometimes they've heard her skip words and skip ayats. So they all stress. <laughs> and they ask the, 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 the sheikh and they um, just pray for her just to not hurt her feelings. Because she wants to be the imam. And the sheikh said, well, when it comes to fiqh, very gently and very kindly uh, inform her. Right, that that she makes mistakes in her fatiha, uh, it is better that somebody else becomes imam, because even if they point it out to her, she'll do it again. Uh, she just do it again, uh, because she's forgetful. Uh, she's an old woman, forgetful. Uh, so they, they they will they will you know um uh, uh have have to say something about it, uh, to her to allow for somebody else, uh, to be the imam, uh, or have someone uh, mention this in front of everybody. Right, uh, about it, and then see how lah. But they have to lah. They have to. So if you if you're praying in the in the person in your house, the the imam in your house, like your grandfather or your father or your brother, um, fatiha is not correct. 
right? So you brother easy lah, brother can understand. <laughs> right? right one, the one that is difficult is an old, an elderly man, right? That's in the house who's being the imam. You need to it. Um, either you just don't pray with them, right? So sometimes I, for me, I, I, if I know when it's going to be the imam, then I will delay my thinking of the wudu. I, I so I, I will come to the prayer late after they have finished. So in a sense, I, I don't, I will not join them lah. Uh, in their jemaah, I, or I would just wait for my husband and I'll prepare my husband. I, but but you, you have to, you have to because it's, it's a ruling. I, so the qari, I, the one who um, recites Quran properly, may not follow one uh, who is unable to recite Fatiha properly, irrespective of him being unable to recite other verses properly besides Fatiha or not. So basically, it's about it's about Fatiha. The Fatiha, all the rukun kauli lah, all the rukun kauli has to be correct, right, for the person. Uh, the follow so so for example if you come into a jamaah and then and then you realize the imam's uh fatiha is wrong and you hear you're like Allah Allah, 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 Allah. you hear all the, the, the letters all wrong so then then you need to niat mufaraka you uh, you must niat mufaraka and pray by yourself hmm. um okay number 84 okay the mamum should not stand ahead of the imam and uh, this is in front of the imam uh, so number uh, point number 84 the followers' prayer is invalid if his heel is involved in the imam's heel. Uh, his heel should not be should be behind the imam's heel, even if it be a little but not more than three arms length. In which case, the merit of jama'ah is lost. Right? Especially for women, eh? Especially for women. So I I, I face a woman. I so sometimes I will so for for women can let me just draw it for you. All. So for women can like this is the stuff, straight stuff. Okay. Then, um, so usually when I pray, people, if you, if you all pray me in my house, it's what I will do. I'll put the, the sejadah this way, right? Then I'll put the imam sejadah like this. Then I'll put the mamum sejadah like this. Okay? Okay, why do I do that? It's because the imam was sujud here. You all have to sujud here. Okay, all of the mamum must sujud here. Which means that the imam will stand here. Is the imam's feet. And the imam will stand here. So the imam will sujud there. Correct? So that means the ma'mum, or where are you all standing? You are standing all here. Okay? You are standing outside the sejadah. Can you see that? Okay? This counts as you being close to the imam. Don't worry about it. Right? You, are, you are counted as close to the imam. Okay? Because in, in Saf, you are close to the imam. Because sometimes when I pray like this, I like to say my, my students or those who are praying with me, they come very close to me. It's sometimes even up to here. They are very close to me, which I feel... Uh, like is is possible they might be ahead of me in their standing as I move and everything in my prayer. Uh, it's possible that they that it's too close. It's too close. Uh, so that's if you if you pray with me, I'll push you behind. <laughs> right? Don't be offended. Eh? <laughs> I'll just push you gently behind to 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 be with yakin that you are behind. Ah, uh, tamam. Uh, so if uh and just why is so so for women you're praying in this kind of stuff. I uh, make sure you can see. Uh, this is like a rule of thumb lah. Eh? Make sure you can see the back of the imam's shoulder. Ah, so don't be so near, because it's possible that as you move, you will you stand in front of the imam, and that will cause for your jamaah to not be valid. Okay, right. You have to be very careful about that. Um, naam. Right. So, but you shouldn't be so far away from the imam. That it should be three arms length. Three arms length is quite far, lah. Right. You be three arms length away from three arms length, like. <laughs> really quite far and then there's no jama'ah uh, between you and the imam okay another question can we can, if let's say I have a like, husband right man so by right if a man and a woman right, the man is in front right, and the woman is at the back correct you're one entire staff away from each other and that is by right a man in front woman at the back uh, if man and man man at the side uh, if two men, they're both at the back. Okay, the man is the, the the imam is by himself in the front. Okay, if let's say I have no space, so for example, this is your room. This is your room. Here is your kibla. The kibla is this way. Okay, so if your husband puts up a sejada in the room, maybe now in his flats, right? Um, so small. <laughs> right, so you he puts sejada there. Where are you gonna put your sejada? You can't possibly be here. <laughs> you want to pray where? <laughs> Correct. Right, so where, where do you pray? You pray here. Next to him. Okay. Is this valid? Yes. Yes, it's valid. Why? Because ruling is his heel 
must be so his feet uh, his feet are here his heel must be above must be ahead of your heel so even though you're not one self behind it's not recommended but if let's say you have no choice it happened to me before when i was in a i was traveling with my husband in a hotel room a very cheap hotel room lah so the bed took up a, a major space of the hotel room they have like corner corridors <laughs> like in basically very narrow passages around the bed and then the door so it's a sm- super small room Right, so how you, how are we going to pray jamaah <laughs> in this super small room when you come pray outside? Right, so basically had to uh, figure out and 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 somewhat the 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 kiblat was singing it. So you come and pray, you know, straight. It's all, it was a singing kiblat. So I had to figure out lah. Right, so is it possible that I pray like that with my husband? Yes, yes. As long as my heel is behind his heel, so I don't have to be a full staff behind him if I can't. Uh, if I can't, of course it's better if you're a woman and he's a man. It should be a full staff behind. But for woman to woman, um, let's say for 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 for, for woman to woman, eh, if I have a, if I have a, a room like that, right, and you see the bed, the bed is here, okay. So let's say um the kiblat is like, uh, so maybe the, maybe the kiblat is like this, but it's enough only for one sejada. I can't I can't have two sejada. So basically, the imam stands here, right, and the imam sujud there, and the mamum stands here, right, and the mamum sujud there, okay. As long as you are, your heel is behind the imam's heel. It is valid, and you can pray on. The, if you're two women, you're small enough, lah. Like, can pray on. Can pray on the same sejada, nah. And then just just pray in that way. Okay. Um. All right. I whether by seeing the imam. Okay. So so number eighty. Uh, point number eighty five. Going back up. Eighty five. The mamu should be aware of his movements of his imam. You must know your imam's movement. So how do you know your imam's movement? In a few ways. Like one way is that you see the imam, either by seeing the imam. Or hearing his mubalir, his mubalir is a person who repeats the imam's takbir in a loud voice, so people can hear. In our time, it's called a speaker, right? So in our time, there's no person who actually um repeats the imam's uh takbir in a loud voice, but you have a microphone. Now, right? a microphone does that, right? That repeats the imam's um uh commandment. So as long as you know the imam has moved, right? so either by seeing the imam or hearing the imam, um. Otherwise, you cannot be a jamaah to the imam if you have no idea what the imam is doing, right? Okay. Um, number eighty-six, and right, number eighty-six is uh the imam and the makmum are in the same masjid or approximately three hundred arm lengths apart. Okay, I'm gonna explain this part a little bit, a little bit uh in detail. Whenever an imam releases a follower in a masjid, the jamaah is valid even if they are at a distance from each other. Multiple interconnected, uh, multiple interconnected, masjid openings onto each other are considered still as one masjid. So too is the masjid's outer courtyard, even when there is a walkway between the courtyard and the masjid. Okay, so basically, basically, this is what is the what the what is the ruling here? Let me draw two situations. Eh, one situation is masjid. All right, let me use. I want to clear everything. Okay, so one situation. Is a masjid situation, right? The other one is a non-masjid. I use, I use blue. Non. Like for example, like a school hall, you know, an open space. Uh, it is possible that you're you're praying in this in the situations or at home lah, at home. Okay, so masjid ruling for as long as you are in. This is the masjid, eh? This is the masjid. For as long as you are in the 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 uh area of the masjid sembadan, and they call it sembadan of the masjid, meaning the the boundary of the masjid. I right? said so the place where you eat ikaf, is specifically the place whereby you eat ikaf. If the imam is all the way here, in the front, if you want to pray all the way there at the back, can, permissible. Ah, uh, it is sah. Ah, uh, your 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 prayer is sah. Your jamaah is sah. Your jamaah is valid. Right? Like why? Right? Because you are all in the masjid. You're all in the masjid. You can pray for oh if you want, but of course it is uh is makro, right? It's makro, and you will lose the um the the reward of jamaah. The jamaah is valid, but the reward is lost right? because you're doing something makro. Okay, if the imam is here, right? But if there are staffs in between, staff, there's one staff of people here, another staff of people here, another staff of people here. You know, as many staffs as possible. You are counted to be in the staff. So you're not far from the imam, and you are near the imam by being connected by saf. As long as the safs are all interconnected, it is all considered to be close. 
what is considered to be far is that if there's nothing in between you and the imam. The imam is all the way there, no one in between, and then you're all the way at the back. Uh, so that one is considered as far. But as long as there are people in between, then the entire thing is interconnected, they're all close. Okay. For example, the masjid has, fin has filled up, right? And here is the outer courtyard of the masjid. So can, can a person continue praying here? Yes, they can. Right? As long as there's a way uh, through. And you can open up a door or something and they can continue praying on this side. They can continue praying outside. And then and all of their staffs are all connected. Their staffs are all connected. Okay. What about uh, non-majid situation? Okay. Non-majid situation, you must be at least 300 feet to the, uh, to, to the imam. You must be within 300 feet to the uh, imam. Is that is it? Is that is it? But this one was was three, three arms length, what? Right? Did you see it was three arms length? Right. Three arms length is if you want to get the reward of jamaah. There's a difference here. Jamaah being valid, but not rewarded, and jamaah not being valid in the first place, and therefore of course not rewarded. Right? Jamaah is not that is not valid. That means the prayer itself not valid. It is not valid. Okay. Jemaah being valid, the prayer is valid, but no reward, no extra pahala, right? No extra reward for that jemaah. So, for example, right? Um, uh, for example, in a non magic situation, the imam is praying here. Okay, right? You need to pray within three arms length of the imam to get the reward of jemaah. You pray here. Okay, it's within three arms length of the imam. Okay, if you choose to pray far away, so you choose not to pray there, you all form your own jama your own uh, self here, far from the imam. Okay, if this is within 300 feet, the jama'ah is valid with the loss of reward. Okay, loss of reward. The jama'ah is valid, you can pray in that way, yes, loss of reward. You don't get the reward of jama'ah. No, you don't get the reward of jama'ah. Okay. However, as we mentioned again, if there are rows of people in between, right, then you are only counted to the next row that is in front of you. You're not counted to the imam, but you're counted to the next row that is in front of you like that. Okay. Every row is only counted to the very previous row that was in front of it. So they're all connected. They're all connected. So it's less than three, less than three feet, less than three feet, less than three feet. It's all connected. The whole thing is jama'ah, the reward of jama'ah. Okay. Alright, and one last thing I want to mention. I hope you all are following me. If, let's say, you come to the masjid, and not masjid, masjid or, or um, house, you come there, and you're like, eh, the, the rows are right to the end of the, of, the, of the hall. Right, it's filled up right to the end. There's no space to squeeze. Right? So you come in, and then you stand by yourself here. One person. One person in a saf. One person in a self is mark row. Right. One person in a self is mark row. So if you pray like that, if you stand like that, and you pray like that, in yet jama'ah, your prayer is valid, yes. Your jama'ah is valid, yes. You don't get the reward of jama'ah. You actually lose the reward of jama'ah. It's your reward is as if you're praying by yourself. Doing anything mark row in jama'ah makes you lose the reward of jama'ah. Right, so so you say, what am I going to do? I, I, I came into the masjid and they're already praying and then the, the rows are, are right up to the to the edge of the of the hall. There's no way I can squeeze into the staff. Like, there, really no way. They're, 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 they're shoulder to shoulder. You, you cannot squeeze in. What do I do? You have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have a choice of two things. All right. The first thing is wait for someone else to come. <laughs> All right, so you're just hoping someone comes and enjoy me and so I have a two people jama'ah at the back. All right, so if you know that if someone's taking wudu and they are, they're going to come, you can wait for that person for a while and then you can start the jama'ah here. And remember, your, your staff is always, the staff always starts from the center. Okay, never start the staff from the side. Staff always starts from behind the imam. Okay? Right, this is another, another, another thing to point and eh? note at the point. Uh, uh, things uh, uh, note to to take note, another point to take note of that jama'ah always starts from the middle. If you come to a jama'ah, right, if you see the um, uh, that is equal on both sides, go to the right side of jama'ah. 
if you see the right is more on the left, go to the left of the jama'ah. Okay, so as to make it even. Right, so you come in, you see, okay, right is more than left, go left. Then you see, hey, left is more than right, go right. Okay, and if they're equal, then go right. Tamam? Okay, what if you come into the jama'ah, right, and then you realize that, okay, there's nobody going to come in, you didn't see anybody else, you're the only one there. And you know, praying by yourself is makro. Praying as a single person in yourself is makro. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to the, the person in front of you, you're, and say again, the person must know the ruling. The person in front of you must know the ruling. You're going to um, hold their shoulder and gently pull them back. Okay? <laughs> so, if you okay, if okay. So, let's say you're praying in Jama'ah like, and you feel somebody, probably me, <laughs> like pulling you back like from yourself. Follow. Follow the pull. Okay? Don't, don't resist. Oh, why are you pulling me? <laughs> like, don't resist. If you feel somebody's hand on your shoulder and they're pulling you back, what they're trying to do is to get you to join them in the saf. They're trying to get you to join them in the saf. Because right? they can't pray by themselves in the saf um, to get the reward of Jama'ah. So they're trying to get you who's in prayer and stay in prayer. Don't, don't battle your prayer. Stay in prayer. But move one, one two steps, pause to Matnina. One, two steps, pause to Matnina. One, two steps, Pause to Matnina. Don't go three steps in a row. Okay? So you can walk backwards <laughs> and your chest is still towards the Qibla. Tamam? Your prayer, your, your prayers are. Prayers are. There's nothing wrong with your prayer. I say, so if there's someone, but I, I've never done this before in my life. Because I, I, I know the ruling, but I don't know if the people know. <laughs> so you try and pull them, like, why are you pulling me? They didn't resist against your pull. <laughs> you don't know what to do. <laughs> Right, so it's so, um, but if it ever happens to you, <laughs> probably I'm doing it to you. I said, my students from Bijahari, they all, they all know the hukum ready. You can go and pull them. <laughs> it's because I see, yeah, mashallah. Okay, ruling of this, ruling of this. If you come into okay, so let's say you want to be, you want to be the puller and not, not the pulled, <laughs> you want to be the puller. All right, so you come in, you're, you're late for your your last one to come for the jama'ah, the last person. The staffs are all filled up. You want to make a new staff, you're the only one there. All right. How do you do it? Okay, you must first tuck bear and enter into prayer. You cannot pull the person before you tuck bear and enter into prayer. You must tuck bear and enter into prayer first. Then you take one step forward. So all kind of skillful. Eh? Don't go more than three movements in a row. Don't go and don't battle your prayer. So you, Allahu Akbar, in one saf. Okay, you're the only one in the saf. Take one step forward, hand out. Pull the person, okay? Pull the person a little bit, right? Technically, if the person has some fake knowledge, they will begin to move backwards. They will realize what's going on and they will follow your pull, right? And they'll move backwards and they will stand in with you in self and you continue praying. Why must you tuck beer first? Why can't I pull first and then I tuck beer? Because you cannot bring somebody from a self to a non self the saf, the saf that you're going to bring them to has to be a valid saf. So if you're not praying yet, it's not a saf. Correct? It's not a rule if you're not praying yet. You have to be praying. And that, so that means you have to begin the prayer. So you are praying and you are in a saf. Now you can bring somebody from, a, from a, the in front saf to the back saf. But if you're not praying yet, you're pulling her from saf to non-saf. Uh, you can't do that. Okay? So if you want to do this thing, I've never done it before in my life because I, 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 I don't know if the mum will follow me. I don't know. <laughs> like, like if, just wait for somebody to come. <laughs> I, maybe somebody's coming and then I can just pray with that person. <laughs> right. So, um, so, so you, Allah Akbar, come into self. Right? You're alone by yourself. Take a step forward. Pull the person. Inshallah, the person follows you. They follow you back. <laughs> and they stand next to you. And you continue praying together with the imam. People in front um, move, okay, move to cover the gap, all right, so that you they kind of like they, they can loosen their their stuff, okay, uh, to cover the gap, all right. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, um, okay, there are eight, nine, and ten, eh? and then there is eleven. Okay, uh, I will stop there for today, inshallah. Next lesson, we'll continue with eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? 
Okay, no questions. You will stop there. And inshallah, um, we will continue our Arabic. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.